So here's, let's move on to B. We have taken the cosine of an angle that has more than one item in it. We have pi over 2. And then we also have this whole arc cosine of 5x. So we're going to use the cosine rule for when our angle has more than one thing, which is the cosine of the first times cosine of the second. And then we do opposite sign with cosine, so plus. Now it's sine of the first times sine of the second equals my negative 12x. Okay. Well, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so that's going to wipe all of this away on that left side. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, so I'm going to get 1 times sine arc cosine. They are opposite of each other, so I'm going to get that rule of 1 minus my angle squared is equal to a negative 12x. Okay, so the square root of 1 minus 25x squared is equal to a negative 12x, and like above, let's square both sides. So I get 1 minus 25x squared is equal to 144x squared. Let's group our x squareds together. So 1 is equal to 169x squared. Divide by 169. And taking the square root with a plus or minus, we can wrap this up. And so plus or minus one thirteenth is equal to x. Okay, so those are potential answers. Going to the problem, our arc part or the arc part was arc cosine, so that means I need to check to make sure real quick. Can I fit my potential answers between negative one and one? Or truthfully, between negative one fifth and positive one fifth? Well, because thirteen's larger than five, it means that one thirteenth is smaller than a fifth, so it's definitely in this interval. So looking good so far. So all I have to do really is take both the numbers, the positive one thirteenth, plug it in, the negative one thirteenth, and plug it in. Okay? And just kind of checking with you guys just real quick, I plugged in the positive one thirteenth into the left side and it gave me a positive number coming out. So if I plug in a positive one thirteenth on the right side, because it's a negative twelve against multiplied to it, it's obviously not going to work. So it looks like the positive is definitely out of the question. And then if I plug the negative one thirteenth in on the left side, I actually got a positive answer out. And so if I plug the negative one thirteenth on the right, a negative twelve and a negative one thirteenth comes out positive. So here, our answer is just going to be the negative one thirteenth. All right, part C. Oops. Okay. In part C, we're kind of going back to one of those trickier ones, or ones we got to watch out for. I'm taking the cosine of 2 arc cosine, okay? Going through some formulas for cosine of a double angle. We want to shrink it by half. I have options. I can either write it as cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, or I could have written it as 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Well, since I have arc cosine, I'm probably going to do the one that just has cosine in it. Okay. In this case, our theta in the formula is all the part that I just underlined. So cleaning this up, it's going to be 2 cosine squared of the angle, which is arc cosine 3x, is equal to 2x squared. Okay. We're used to seeing cosine arc cosine, not cosine squared. Well, we just kind of have to, if you want to write it twice, that's all it's saying. So cosine of arc cosine 3x times cosine arc cosine of 3x is equal to 2x squared. That's all that that is saying. So we have 2 times cosine arc cosine, which is 3x, cosine arc cosine, which is 3x, is equal to 2x squared. And hopefully y'all caught this too. I was looking at that for a second I was like, uh-oh, that left side looks kind of weird. Do you notice in the whole formula what I forgot to put in there? 
was the minus 1. So follow me just here for two seconds. Let's go back and put the minus 1 in. So I could, you know, act like I'm Miss Queen and, you know, um, that, you know, oh my gosh, Stacy does everything perfect. Well, I'll let you know, sometimes I do forget things. So it's good, though. I want you to see that sometimes, you know, so hopefully if you watch me and I catch my errors, that hopefully that's something that happens to you guys. Because once you hate that, by the time you finally recognize and use the formula, you're like, yeah, I got that right formula. And then you end up not using it correctly. That would not be so fun. So let's come in here. So 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 is equal to 2x squared. So 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Okay. We need to put a little minus 1 on that last step. And then we can call, we can call ourselves back into business here. Okay. So 2 times 3 times 3 is 18x squared minus 1 is 2x squared. Okay, um, I don't know. Let's move the 2 over. Let's move the 1 that way. So we get 20x squared is equal to 1. x squared is 1 20th. And square root both sides plus or minus we get x to be plus or minus 1 over the square root of 20 which 20 you can write as 4 times 5 square root of 4 is 2, square root of 5 is square root of 5, and of course we got to rationalize this booger. So, x is equal to the square root of 5 over 2 times 5, because 2 and the square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5, so 2 times 5 is 10, and we've got a plus or minus in there. So let's check out plus or minus real quick, and we can call this problem finished. I went in and actually just checked both of them, just take two seconds, and I didn't get either one of them to work, mainly because when I did the positive square root of 5 over 10 and the negative one, both on the left side, I both got negative answers coming out. And if you look at the right side, anything squared has to stay positive no matter what. So I got no solution, but I want you all to take two seconds and check yourselves and see what, if you all got the same thing. Okay? And, but I'm going to move on to the last example so we can call this lesson finished. Hopefully you all are getting the whole idea of just checking it out. And you're getting more comfortable with using your calculator and all the different buttons on the calculator. Okay. Cosine of a half angle when we're going to double it up. Here, so cosine of like theta over 2 is going to be the square root of 1 plus cosine of theta over 2. And we have a plus or minus in there. Okay. All right. Here's all theta right there. So it's going to be plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine arc cosine x over 2. All divided by 2 is equal to negative x over 2. And cosine arc cosine go away. 1 plus x over 2 divided by 2. And finish cleaning up inside of here. This is going to be 2 plus x over 2, all of that divided by 2. And all of that is still underneath the square root sign. Okay. Um, if we want to finish cleaning up inside of here first, and then we'll worry about getting rid of the square root. So plus or minus, and what this is saying is 2 plus x over 2 divided by 2 which is the same thing as the multiplying by the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half. Okay, so plus or minus the square root of 2 plus x over 4 equals negative x plus 2. Okay, so at this step, why don't we square both sides? And when you see is really this whole plus or minus out front doesn't really matter in these cases because whether you're squaring a positive, you're squaring a negative, it goes away. You get just 2 plus x over 4 is equal to squaring that negative is positive, and you get x squared over 4. If I want to clear the fractions, let's multiply both sides of this equation by 4. So that takes that away, takes that away, and you get 2 plus x is equal to x squared. I have a quadratic, so let's set everything equal to 0. x squared minus x minus 2. Okay, so the factors of negative 2 that add up to negative 1. 
you get x minus 2, x plus 1. So this is telling me I have two potential answers, x equals 2 or x equals negative 1. Okay, let's circle those up as our potentials. We'll go to the original problem, arc cosine. So let's put, this time I'm going to do it this one. I didn't do it in the last example because sometimes it's, most of the time it's we've been working out great, but let's do it here just because we have some obvious answers, not like 5 over the square root of 17. Multiply it by 2. So it's saying that my answers can only fit between negative 2 and positive 2. Well, both of those check out, so it's looking good so far. So the only other thing I would do is plug both of them back into the original equation and make sure they do work out. And real quick, I just tried it myself. I plugged 2 into the equation, and I got on the left side a, neg a positive 1, and if I plug 2 on the right side, I get a negative 1. So it looks like 2 we're going to have to throw out. Let me, let's check negative 1 as well. And if you plug in a negative 1, you actually get on the left side positive a half, and if you plug negative 1 on the right side, you get positive half as well, so it looks like x equals negative 1 is our only answer for this one.